Welcome back, and I already can see Dr. Darren Coleman, a brand advisor and honorary consul for Lithuania at Birmingham, uh, here on Zoom. Hi, Darren, can you hear us? Labas Ritas, Labadiana. Labas Ritas, Labadiana, Darren. Uh, how are you? Kaip gyvojate? Yeah, very well, thanks. How's it going? Ačiū, mes, mes labai gerai, smagui... Oh, sorry, <laughs> I switched to Lithuanian for a moment, because yours was so good. So... Uh, would you prefer the Lithuanian? Uh, sounds like you're, uh, you're very good at it. I'm speaking Lithuanian, but I think I've already reached the limits of my Lithuanian. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, it's good to have you here. Uh, just a few more words about you for those who, who may be seeing you for the first time. You have 20 years of uh, global brand strategy experience, uh, working with Johnson & Johnson, Nikon, Pepsi, Dubai Properties, financial services, education, and more. You're also the author of a Building Brand Experiences, a practical guide to retaining brand relevance. Since we have 15 minutes, let's jump right in. Uh, we all know what is customer experience. I've been learning it at university. But brand experience, something that you talk a lot, is uh, quite new for me. Can you tell us what is brand experience um, and how it is different from customer experience? Sure. So with customer experience, the focus is primarily on customers, whereas in reality, that's an oversimplification of, of the world that we live in. So brand experience is about focusing not just on customers, but also thinking about stakeholders. So the supply chain, members of the local community, people like that, investors. So a brand experience perspective um, looks at stakeholders as opposed to customers. That's the first point. And secondly, with brand experiences, it's very much about bringing the brand to life at touch points as customers go or stakeholders move through the experience. And that's important because the real value lies in the brand. The experience is the means to the end. The experience is the way that you experience the value and the value lies in the brand. So, so they're the two main distinctions. Brands looks at bigger picture, brand experience, thinking about stakeholders, but brand experience connects and expresses the brand through the experience at key touch points. Yeah, and I can imagine uh, that so many brand ambassadors, uh, marketing uh, managers would agree with you. It's so important to work on your brand, to, 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 to work around it. Uh, that's something that a marketing manager would say, but do actually a lot of them actually do it? And how do you see the difference between a company that does that, that uh, really focuses on brand experience and the one who's like really missing it? Yeah, there's a really simple way to identify companies that understand not only their brand, but how to deliver brand experiences and simply go to one of their social channels, Twitter, Insta, etc. And just scan down their channel. And if it has a consistent feel, it shows they understand how to bring their brand to life through one channel, through the content, tone of voice imagery, stories, things like that, and then just jump onto another social channel and see whether they can bring their brand to life in a consistent way. So if that experience and the emotional response that you get from that channel isn't consistent within a channel, that's the first warning sign. And then if it's not consistent between channels, again, that shows that a company hasn't really thought, one, about its brand, and two, how to bring its brand to life. And then when you amplify that beyond social to think about retail, other digital touch points, that's how you can see whether an organization has really connected brand and experience. Yeah, and it's really hard to say who are watching uh, login more, the, 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 the big companies or uh, the people who have small businesses. Um, it's not for me to tell. I would get, maybe guess what? There are more people from small businesses, maybe uh, a team of one, a team of five, and so on. So managing a brand when you're a big company or a small company is very, very different. And that's something that came out uh, while I was talking with some local businesses here in Vilnius, um, talking with them about how, what should I ask you. And what they are saying is that basically the same thing. That's very different to manage your brand if you're small or if you're, if you're big. If you're small, you're a one-man team, you're doing everything. It's so, you're so connected with the brand. 
But at some point, you have to uh, give someone else the job of take, taking care of your brand. Is there a way to prepare it and how to make this moment uh, something you know pleasurable and not painful? Um, well, brands are a bit like babies, you know, you have to look after them and grow and nurture and take care of them. And inevitably, people become emotionally attached to their brands when they're building their own business. Um, but that can be a limiting factor. So what you have to do is try and distance yourself by thinking about the brand as a business asset and actually you could be a limiting factor because one day people will want to step back or delegate responsibility. So, so my advice would be to think very carefully about what your brand is, think about the values, the positioning, the emotional response and, and just get that down on a piece of paper, just one sheet of A4, be really clear about it because then when you do hand over the reins to your first brand manager, your first marketing manager, then it's really clear what you think your brand is all about. And it removes or at least reduces that scope for ambiguity and uncertainty. And then you can take a step back, feeling more confident that what's in your brain and how you want the brand to be built has been clearly communicated. Because if it's all in your brain, then it's really hard for other people to read what's in there. So you need to be really clear, get it down on a piece of paper and make it clear to your team what your brand is, the emotional response that your brand should generate, values, etc., and then clarify their understanding. And once they're clear, then you, you should be able to step back so I understand these concerns and we see it a lot with succession planning and things like that. Um, but, but you need to make it clear what your brand is so you can stand back and then let somebody else manage that while you get on with other parts of your business. But keeping a close eye on the brand in the interim, of course. Yeah. Sounds so easy when you are naming the key points of what to do. <laughs> in real life, I guess it's, a, it's, a, it's a more complicated. Uh, yeah, it is. There's the reality and there's you know, what I'm saying. Um, if I was to give one piece of advice for somebody starting off with a brand, uh, really think about how do you want your target customers or other stakeholders to feel? Mm -hmm. yeah? and, and be crystal clear about that. Do you want them to feel privileged? Do you want them to feel fortunate? Do you want them to feel challenged, inspired? If there's only one thing that you do to crystallize the understanding of your brand within your organization. Be really clear about that because everything else from brand building emanates, it grows from the emotional response. So yeah, to simplify complexity, I would say draw a heart on a piece of paper and in the middle of that heart, put the word, the emotional response that you would like people to have for your brand and then grow from there. Yeah, well, I was listening to you and I was wondering, um, in the context of uh, the pandemic, of COVID, was it something that you, I, I can imagine you were, that you are saying this for quite some time, since you're working with it for quite some time. Uh, do you see that the brands have learned a lesson or two during the pandemic? Or um, did you have this, I told you so moment or something like that during the pand pandemic? <laughs> Well, the first rule of running a branding agency is never to tell a client, I told you so or else. Um, <laughs> okay. they'll, they'll, they'll kindly show you the door. You do think that, but you don't say it. And in terms of some of the lessons that brands have learned, I think some of them have had a bit of a rude awakening, some, some surprises, because some organizations have felt they've got powerful brands. But COVID has really put brands under the spotlight in terms of what they stand for and what they believe and how they help consumers and other members of society. And it's become quite apparent that a lot of brands don't stand up to meet the grade. There's actually not much substance behind the nice visual. Um, so a number of brands have had to take a step back and be honest with themselves and reflect and say, well, what's our story, what value do we deliver, how are we different, how do we help our customers and other members of society. And then once they've got that, then they can move forward to the brand management and the brand building stage. So I think a number of brands have had a bit of a rude shock because what they thought they'd got actually isn't a strong enough, a powerful enough, powerful enough brand 
to stand the test that COVID has, has put their way. Yeah, you, you almost answered the no next question I have, which comes from Aglia. A brilliant question. I just want to say thank you very much for the viewers of Login for sending me so such smart questions. Uh, it, it's really, it's amazing. I think it's a brilliant question. So Aglia is asking, how would you describe the difference between marketing and branding to a, a client who wants marketing, but we want to do branding first? The difference between marketing and branding, oh, that's a tough question. Yeah. To a client. Uh, Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think marketing is the overall process of um, delivering value to customers. So marketing is the overall process of delivering value to customers, whereas brand is all about, you know, brand is a subset of marketing, and that's primarily focused on the emotional response that contributes to that value that you deliver through marketing. That's... Um, as simple as I could put it, Egli. Yeah, I can imagine Egli is maybe having clients who want to sell but doesn't have a strong brand. So Egli, you can still clarify if you can. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely ask Darren the question. And uh, since we are talking a lot about the pandemic uh, this year at Logan, uh, naturally, uh, and things are slowly, uh, I, I want to knock to a little bit to the wood, uh, yeah, uh, things are slowly coming back to normal, really slowly. But do you think it's about time to think, uh, uh, for the brands to think about how are they going to get back to that normal everyday life? Since uh, I guess we all hope that brands had a plan for this kind of chaos, what's called pandemic. Most of them yes. maybe didn't. But is there anything that they can already do? when planning, you know, returning from digital maybe to more physical, from this strange uh, closed and um, I don't know how to call this life to some more normal one that we are used to? Yeah, um, I think there's two things I would say off the back of that is, it sounds quite blunt, but it appears the route out of COVID is um, populations being vaccinated. And we're seeing this in certain markets, for example, the US and certain countries in the Middle East where there's a higher percentage of the population that's being vaccinated, um, we're seeing more stability. So from a big picture and um, strategically, I would be thinking in that way. And then in terms of what you can do now, um, stay really close to your target customers and other stakeholders that interact with your brand and think long and hard about how you can make your brand relevant and useful to those customers and other stakeholders through the experiences that you deliver. So, so really stay close to them because there's gonna be some bumps on the road, I'm, I'm afraid to say. And the closer that you can stay to your customers, the more relevant your brand will be. And the more relevant your brand will be, then the more people will buy it. So I hope that helps. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Darren. And um, time really flies. Uh, I think my last question is, since we just touched the brand experience here, actually, uh, what would one find in your book that talks about brand experiences? What more can you tell us? Uh, what, are, what are the topics there? Uh, how deep does it go? Well, my book um, provides practical advice on how marketers can go about building brand experiences. You know, time and time again, clients have said to us over the years, you know, we understand building brand experience is important. We want to do it, but we don't know where to start or how to go about doing it. And, and hearing that from clients time and time again was the inspiration for my book. So what my book does is provides um, a practical guide, a helping hand that will help marketers build brand experiences for themselves. Thank you very much, Darren. Uh, thank you for spending some time with us and thank you for explaining how uh, the brand Achoo, experience. Thank you. Achu, Achu, Yums, Achu, Darren. It was Darren, um, uh, Darren Coleman, uh, a consul for Lithuania at Birmingham and brand advisor and someone who really knows branding well. So thank you very much, Darren. Achu, Ikikitupas Matimo.